this is Carrie with Canary Quilts and today I want to talk about the Simple Whatnots, um, it's not a black of the month, it's more of a quilt of a month. Um, you get mini quilts with Kim Deal fabrics um, from Henry Glass Fabrics and Company and um, they send out all the fabrics you need and then you get a free pattern with it. Um, the pattern is not available in other areas so you can only get it in this uh, quilt of the month if that's what you want to call it. Um, I am showing you this because I love this um, series of quilts that you get. I did it two years ago and I had so much fun doing it and I couldn't wait to do it again. Now this is in several quilt shops. I am going through Fat Quarter Shop for my um, subscription and I'm getting it every month and I've already received month two. If you watched my last box opening you saw me open month two. And um, I'm hopefully going to be getting that done pretty soon. But month one was, it was fun to put together. I did some applique that I've never done before. So I wanted to go over that. I'm not really going to show you how to put together this quilt. I'm just going to show you this um, applique that she shows you, tells you how to do in the pattern. First time for me. So I want to show you how it goes for me and hopefully inspire you if you want to do something like this. Now I know at Fat Quarter Shop you can sign up for this. Um, it's out of stock at the moment but you can get notified when it becomes in stock. Um, sometimes they do sell these just on their own. So if they do I will let you know um, if you like just one certain month. So. I'm going to show you the fabrics. I'm going to show you how much fabric's left after all of this is done because that is another really big reason I'm in this is because there's a lot of fabric left. And then I'm going to show you my applique, how I interpreted how to do this applique so that if you ever come across it, maybe, you know, you can take some inspiration from me. So hit the subscribe button notification bell if you want to um, watch content like this. I've got lots of other fun content going on. Also, let me show off a couple other things before we get started. This is uh, the Cupid from the Cupid Box Sew Sampler, and um, my mom and I put this together. It's the Valentine-themed box they have. This is from Open Gate Quilts. They have a box. I'll have a link to all of this down below. And they have a project theme box, and my mom put this together for me. I didn't have time to do it, but she has fun doing this. So she put together their Valentine-themed quilt. So I've got um, all of their quilts, I think, that I've gotten, all their project-based quilts. So that's a fun box also. But anyway, there you go. Let's get started. All right, I'm down here working on Simple Whatnots 13 Comfy Cozy, the first quilt that they sent out for 2024. And I've already done the rail fence on the inside. That was pretty easy to put together. No issues there. Um, I'm working on the applique on the outside and she does what she calls a invisible machine applique. So what I need to do is for all these half, she calls them half pennies, there's three layers. I need to cut 20 pieces of freezer paper. So. I've decided I don't want to trace this 20 times, so I'm going to trace it once, and then I'm going to transfer it to a card stock. I'm going to put five of them on a piece of paper, which I have another, a bigger piece off to the side, and fold it so that I'm cutting several at one time. It'll just make my life a little easier. I wasn't even sure I wanted to do this at first. There's just so much of this. But I want to show you how to do it so that, you know, if you ever run across it, you can maybe hopefully figure out how to cut your time down. <laughs> so I've got the big half penny on the outside done. I've got all 20 of them over here. Now I need to do the middle half penny. And I'm just going to trace it. And I'm just using freezer paper because that's what I pulled out right now to trace onto. And I'm going to get this cut out. Now that I've got it cut out, I want to transfer it to my card stock. I'm going to cut it out of my card stock. And I am now going to transfer five of them. I'll do five of them and then I'll fold it up four times so that when I cut it, I get 20 pieces. 
All right, so now I am going to fold this. I'll fold it in half. It's enough for these. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to fold it in half again. So now I can get four of these from each cut. So then I'll have 20 that I've cut out. All right, that's how I'm cutting my freezer paper. Um, I still have to do the small half penny. I need four of these whole pennies, and then I'm gonna need some leaves. So I'm gonna get everything cut, but I just wanted to let you know, maybe if it looked a little daunting how I'm doing it, and it's not gonna take as long. All right, I've got all my pieces cut. These are my half pennies. These are my three whole pennies, and then these are each eight of my leaves, the small and the large. So the first thing I'm gonna do, well, excuse me, Mr. Jingles. People need to see what I'm doing, Jingles. Come here. Oh. All right, the first thing I need to do is pull out my green fabrics for these leaves, and um, I'm gonna work on those. But look at all those fabrics. There's another green fabric. I guess you have a lot of choices in green fabrics for your leaves. All right, I've got my green pieces and I wanna put basically two leaves. I've got four green pieces. I wanna put two leaves on each one. You need to leave about a half inch in between. And with my freezer paper, I just iron it down. She says to put a dab of glue in there on your piece and then put it down and cut it out. Um, for right now, I'm just going to iron these on. But like I said, you need to leave at least a half inch in between all your pieces because we have to cut our seam allowance out on each piece. All right, so to cut these out, we're just going to cut around it. Like this. So I'm going to get all my pieces ready to go, and then I'll show you what comes next. All right, I got all my pieces cut. I have started pressing my seams. It's going to take a while. It took a while to get to here, listen to a podcast or two. Um, I've never done this before, but I'm reading it, and I think, pretty sure what you need to do is press your... Uh, seams towards your template here that you cut. Now, I use the sticky side as my template, but what I've been doing is just peeling it off, turning it back over, and then I'm just using my iron to stick these seams down. And I'm just going around and doing that. Keep making sure I don't burn my fingers. I don't know. <laughs> I'll let you know what I think about this when I'm done. Oh boy, I don't know. I don't know if I could do this. I am going to do this. But at this point in my process, I just don't know if I could do a whole quilt like this. This is a very small quilt. There are a lot of these little pieces. I guess what I'm seeing also is if you would have taped the back side of your freezer paper down, or not taped, um, glued it down like she said, then maybe this side would be stickier. But it seems to be sticking enough for me. So, there we go. I think there's enough of a crease once I get this down that when I start sewing it down, it'll work. Let me know if you've done this. Let me know what you think of what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just not even sure. Um... But yeah, there's my pieces. I got all of these to iron, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. And then I'll show you when they're done. All right, I'm finishing up my, I don't even know what it's called anymore. <laughs> it's like hand applique, but it's mini stitch applique or something like that. I don't remember. I've been doing this for hours. It's taken a while. Um, I switched irons. I have a cordless iron, which I freaking love and I exclusively use, but I found out I couldn't really use it on this. Um, I need something that provides constant heat 
So I use um, a cord. I'm using my corded iron right now. The other one I had to keep putting back and letting it sit for a minute. I think I'm getting a blister from the heat on my finger. Yeah, fun times here. But I'm doing it. I'm doing this. Um, I did find with the leaves that I could actually use the iron to fold this over just to follow the curvature of the paper. Whew, my finger. All right. I am going to... I've got these tails. I'm going to assume maybe I clip them when I get to sewing them on or fold them under when I sew them on. I'm really not sure. So here's my leaves, my big and little ones, my little circles, medium circles, large circles, large half pennies, medium half pennies, <laughs> my tiny half pennies. This one needs to be ironed again. So now I got to get these sewn onto my um, borders. If you remember, this is what I'm going for right here is this border. So this is how much fabric I had left. There's still a ton of fabric left, even after cutting all these appliques. So that's good. That's positive from this, right? All right, let me get my border started and see how I do. All right, I'm ready to start what Kim Deal calls invisible mono or invisible machine applique technique. So I've taken my larger half pennies here and I've taken some glue, which I got in a sew sampler, so I'm giving it a shot here. And I put a little bit of glue on the seam allowance, just right up here at the top. Just a little bit of glue up here on the fabric. And then I laid them down, how she told me to lay them down, on my border, and then I ironed them. So they are, you know, even with a little bit of glue, they're stuck on there, so that's good. And then I tested my monofilament invisible thread, which is, I have the width of the stitch, which is when you're going this way, when, you're, when your stitch is going this way, I set it standard, my standard machine, but then, actually that would be the length, sorry. The width is set very low. I'm gonna zoom in, see if you can even see it, but my stitch starts here and goes to here with monofilament thread. So now we have to use this stitch to attach these down. So I am gonna give that a shot. Hopefully with that small stitch, I can get in there and just start grabbing the applique piece and the border and going back and forth around it. So let me give this a shot, see how it goes. All right, there's my first border with just the large half penny. I have already started, and I it's my understanding, this is how you do it to pull the papers out. You leave a quarter inch, you can see my stitching here, and you leave a quarter inch seam allowance. Just cut away that border fabric. And then we can pull the paper out. like that. And then I've just been giving it a pat down with the iron. So that's how I'm doing it. That's how I'm reading the instructions. And it seems to be working. I will see how it goes when I put my other half pennies on and get those pulled off. All right. There we go. What do you think? Didn't go as bad as I thought it would sewing it. Um, so far putting these together was by far the most tedious and time consuming. Um, was not fun, I'll put it that way. Let's see if it's worth it in the end. But I gotta do four of these borders and four corners still. All right, there's the first. I'm gonna put my other half pennies on, on this border and see how it goes before I go on to other borders. All 
that's what it's looking like so far. All right, I got my medium half pennies glued on and I'm going to sew them on just like I did the other ones, the big ones, and then I'm going to come back and show you what it's like to cut these out because I don't know yet. Um, so we will experience that together. The papers is what I'm talking about. So, huh, let's see how this goes. All right, there's my medium half pennies put on. I have turned it, oh, I'm turning it over and I have taken one of these out. So I'm doing the same thing. My stitching is right here. I am just going to, again, cut about a quarter of an inch seam allowance underneath that stitching. and then pull my paper out. And give it an iron. Just to flatten it out. So, seems to be working. Which is good news, huh? <laughs> For our first time ever doing this, I was not sure. All right, so there's my mediums. I'm going to start putting my small ones on and do the same thing, exactly the same thing I've done with the other two sizes. And um, I'll show you what those look like in the end. If I find anything weird or interesting, I will certainly come back and show it to you. But it seems to be going pretty well and they're all three gonna be put together exactly the same way. All right, I'm working on my corners with the circles doing the exact same thing, gluing them down and then applicating them on. And then I'm taking, for this I'm taking my seam ripper and just starting a little rip in there and then cutting <clears throat> around, leaving that quarter inch seam allowance and then pulling the paper out. So I've kind of used, kind of using my seam ripper to hopefully find a spot where the paper can come up. Let's see, this one's a little smaller. Let's just cut a notch to the, close to the seam. <clears throat> Maybe we can get it pulled out. Okay, I got a rip in the paper, so there we go. There we go. Just got to gently work for it. All right. That is a corner and I've done a border. So I'm gonna get this all finished up and see where we go from here. All right, there's the corner. There's my border. Phew, there we go. Got my four borders and my corners done. Took a little while. Honestly, it didn't take as long as putting the paper on these, cutting them out and then folding the seam allowances over the paper, but Anyway, what we need to do now is two of these are going to get corners and two are going to go directly on the quilt center and then we'll add these onto the quilt center and then we add our leaves around our corners. So I'm going to get this constructed and get my leaves on because my leaves are going to be exactly the same as these that I just did. So if I have any issues, I will... Uh, let you know. This is what the, oh, that one I did mess up on. I left the paper on, but the rest of these I did not. That's what the backs look like. All right, let's put this thing together. All right, I have got my, actually, I've got my border done. Went on really well, didn't have any issues with that. I've got some leaves laid out here. And if you remember, I have tails on my leaves. So what I did was, since it's been a while, I went back and ironed these tails down, got them crisp, and then took my scissors, I don't know if this is right, but this is what I'm doing, and just cutting right along the edge of my leaf. And because it's all gonna be sewn down anyway. So that's how I got that look. Now, I'm going to, I've laid these out and I've tried to lay these out so that there is at least a quarter of an inch here, if not more, so that when I put the binding on, I'm not going through the tip of this. 
So now I need to do the same thing, glue these down, and then do my little micro applique around it, and then go in and pull the papers out like I did here. So that's what I'm gonna do. Nothing different than what I did on these. And then um, I'll let you know if I ran into any problems and um, show you what it looks like when it's done. There we go. There's my first corner with my leaves sewn down and I have cut them open and pulled the papers out. It's a little weird to do, but that's how it's done. Um, so nothing major here. These are a little small, just takes a little bit of work to get them out, the little leaves. So that's about it. I'm gonna finish this thing up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, there's month one of Comfy Cozy 13 Simple Whatnots Club. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions, I guess, or if you have any suggestions for me if I do this in the future. I probably, the hardest thing I, let me, I don't want to say it's hard. It was tedious, it was preparing these for applique. Um, I like to paint walls and rooms. I don't like to prepare them for paint. You know what I mean? Taping it all off. That's kind of how it was here. I was just like, oh, this is taking a long time. Is it really going to be worth it? And yes, it was in the end worth it, but it was a little tedious putting it together. So just so you know that going in, um, it's just going to take some time to get to this point. But once it got to this point, wow, did it, it, the applique really flattened out. It looks really good. You saw what the back looked like where you pull out your papers. And um, there you go. It was fun. I'm really happy. I can't wait to get this quilted and get it hanging on my wall. Um, if I run into, I'm doing month two, which looks pretty simple. Um, I may go over that in a video real quick as I'm doing it, but I don't think there's going to be much to this. So, um, there you go. Hit the subscribe button, notification bell. Let me know if you're doing simple whatnots, and, um, you can watch the content that I put out in the future. We've got some cool alongs, and sometimes I put out some free patterns. So, thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!